for life, for life. Let's talk a little bit about this demo of a video game, AEW Fight Forever, shall we? Now let me preface this by just throwing out a disclaimer. I purchased Fight Forever. I actually pre-ordered Fight Forever on Xbox Series S. I bought the Elite Edition with the Matt Hardy pre-order bonus and the what ended up being a joke Season 1 pass. And then I, like many others on launch day, proceeded to play what was a broken, glitchy, half-finished mess with an extremely outdated roster and arena selection. For those AEW fans that care about that sort of thing. It was very little like what was promised. No, what we were told we would get as wrestling game fans for the years heading into release was that we would get the game we've been waiting decades for. A game that would take things we loved the most about classics like No Mercy and SmackDown Here Comes the Pain. Games that fans still play to this day and call the best wrestling games of all time. Take those things and improve upon them. People like Kenny Omega and Tony Khan told us that the good old days were back again and AEW Fight Forever was going to be so good it would bring hundreds of thousands of new eyeballs into professional wrestling again. As a result of how good it was, just like those legendary games of years gone by that I mentioned earlier did. Easy to pick up but hard to master arcade style wrestling that stayed true to the sport, cross platform expansive, and community focused. Online play, continuous support for years to come with an ever changing battle pass system, a great creator wrestler mode and career mode. Plenty of match types. And we got none of it. Instead, what we received is a bug-ridden, broken gameplay experience with collision detection issues, short, unfulfilling entrances and matches, stupid AI, online that was dead on arrival, radio silence from the devs, publishers, and AEW, a creator wrestler suite worse than SmackDown 2 on PlayStation 1. A tacked on half assed career mode that is the exact same no matter who you play as, and it feels more like a chore than anything to get through. And finally, the most basic of match types is all you have to choose from. There's not even a tornado tag exhibition option, people. Can't complain though. We got those mini games and that battle royale mode that the fans of Wrestling video games have been clamoring for for decades now. And to this day almost, what, six months after release, there's still no word from anyone in any of these companies about fixing any of it. Oh, I'm sorry, no gameplay fixes in the works, but there's a new tower mode coming that was free in Mortal Kombat on Sega Genesis. But we're offering it for the low price of, I'm assuming, $15. What? That doesn't sound appealing to you? Well, how about if we say you can unlock some stupid t-shirts nobody will use in that mode and throw in a massively outdated and poorly done Tony Storm model with it? Even the $12 Acclaim DLC that was just released, some of those assets were discovered in the game at launch. So that's right, it was pay-gated. But you get the new updated Dynamite Arena that should have been free for the players that were ripped off and left hanging six months ago on launch. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's all of our faults for trusting people like Kenny Omega and Tony Khan with things they say in the first place. All I can say is that this video game and the way that the customers have been treated in the whole debacle as one of the many, many stains on AEW's reputation that I don't think they'll ever get off. AEW, or any other company ran by Tony Khan in the future, will never get a dime of my money again. And they shouldn't yours either. At least not until this mess is fixed. A clear message has to be sent to not only Tony Khan and AEW, but Ukes, THQ Nordic, 
and the entire video game industry. These kinds of business practices aren't ethical and they aren't accepted.